Okay, so in this video, I want to explain to you the importance of a grid or a honeycomb. Now, I know a lot of you have seen these. Basically, it's those weird grid-looking things that you insert onto a softbox, and they do really have a important purpose. And what it is, basically what it's doing is it's allowing you to create that soft light from a softbox, but give you way more focus on where your light is hitting. So basically, when you use a light, uh, any sort of strobe or softbox, or any sort of strobe without a softbox, I should say, uh, the light kind of just goes wherever. So you're gonna get light spillage on the background and on anything else. But when you put a softbox on it, it's, it's narrowing down where the light is going, but there still is some reflection and some spillage, I guess you could call it. Now, when you put a honeycomb grid on and you set up the grid and get all of that there, then you're really narrowing it in because what it's doing is it's creating a bunch of little lights, little pin spots that create one circular light. Uh, why is this important? Uh, one, if you're shooting in a studio where your subject is close to the background uh, and you don't want your background to be exposed oddly or too bright or anything like that. Another thing is when you're out on location and if you don't want your background to really overpower your subject. So what you can do then is you can drop your, your brightness and your uh, exposure down for the background and then bring in a light and light them up without creating like a weird halo around them or having it bounce off something. Now, when you're shooting outside in sunlight and you, it's super bright, now you're not gonna be able to use a grid, you're not gonna be able to use a softbox. I usually either bare bulb it or use just one of those tin reflectors uh, because you do need that strength and that brightness to overpower the sun. But that's a video for another time. We're not worried about that. We're talking about grids today. I'm actually gonna show you and I'm gonna set up this grid and show you the importance of having one and having a softbox in general. Uh, I already have my settings down and my light is ready to go, but right now I have it just bare bulb. I don't have any softbox, any reflector, any honeycomb, anything like that on it. It's just bare bulb. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you shoot a bare bulb photo. So I have Lavelle here. He is here. He is also a photographer. So he knows the, the whole role here and the what's going on. Check him out. I'll leave his link. Uh, you want, so you want, what do you want? Instagram? Instagram. Instagram. So the link in the, of the Instagram is down in the description down below. If you're watching this on YouTube, otherwise check out the link if you're watching it on some other social media platform. So Lavelle, I'm going to have you turn that shoulder this way just a little bit. There we go. So as you can see, this is a bare bulb light, uh, no reflector on it, no softbox, none of that stuff. It's just a big bright FJ 400 Westcott. So that's, that's, it's powerful. It's too much. It's creating light on the background. It's creating weird, harsh lights on his face. It's just not flattering. Uh, so that's why you don't want to use just an open bulb. Now, if you, like I said, if you're out in super bright sun, then sometimes you have to, uh, because you're overcompensating for the brightness of the sun. So that's something you got to worry about. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just put one of those metal reflectors. I don't even know if it has an actual name other than reflector, but I'm going to put one of these reflectors on the light and we're going to show you how that works. Now, I do have diffusion on it too. So I have a layer of diffusion, a little bit of a softbox scrim on it. So it is going to stop it down just a little bit or narrow it down just a little, but it's still too much. It's still too powerful. Let me bring this down. Also links in the description for the FJ400, along with a 10% off code. If you want to buy it from FJ Westcott, there's a 10% off code in there uh, and you can get yourself one of these awesome lights. Okay, so now we're going to shoot same settings, not going to change anything, just going to get that light about to where it was. And what you're going to see is this is going to allow this light to be much more directed towards his face. But with that being said, it's still pretty harsh. You can see the background now is not as exposed, it's still exposed, but it's not as bad. Now, what I've done with this though, is I've now created more focus towards his face. So with that being said, it's also now more harsh on his face because of that reason. So we have to work with that and we have to get past that. That's where an umbrella or a beauty dish comes in is it, it opens up the amount of light because it's a bigger surface, but it's softer because you're shooting in through a much bigger area of diffusion 
as opposed to just this little thing where the light is bouncing around in there and just coming out at full blast. So what we're gonna do, we'll take this down. And I do have this set up in Rembrandt lighting style, which if you don't know what Rembrandt lighting is, I will be making a video based all around that. But essentially it's lighting at an angle and what it does is it creates a little bit of a sunspot opposite side similar to a Rembrandt painting and I'll kind of show you on the screen right now what I'm talking about when I talk about a Rembrandt style lighting. So I'm just going to leave that hanging there because I know it's going back on in a minute. Pay no attention to, this, to the grid that's hanging out there. Okay, so now I have the Manny Ortiz beauty dish on here uh, ready to go. I think it's a 37, 42 inch. I think I'll, I'll put the text down here. I think it's 42, uh, which is made by Westcott. I do have the matching grid for it, but the grid is not on it right now. Right now, all it is is just the soft box. So now you're seeing a lot more focus on his face and it's a, the, the lighting is a lot softer when it comes to what it looks like on his face. Uh, it's not as harsh. There's not as bright of soft spots. It's, it's a lot more comfortable feeling. And we're also not exposed in the background as much because now I have a soft box on and it's a much softer look and it's not letting it spill that deep. Now it still is because he's only five feet from the backdrop, so it is still spilling. So that's where we need to put that grid on and create even more um, diffusion and stoppage from the overflow. So we'll just take this down again, put this back on. So basically you leave your softbox on, you leave your inner diffusion if you have inner diffusion, and then you just put your grid on as well. So basically you're shooting through whatever diffusion you have, mine is one layer, I did not put the reflector plate in, um, mainly because I forgot to. But So now what we're getting is we're going to have a light that's much more direct just on Lavelle. So it'll be much easier to control. The lighting will just look so much softer. And there should, if I did it right, there should not be next to any spillage onto the background. So now you're seeing what I'm talking about. Now these, all of the photos so far have not been edited. They haven't been touched up. You're seeing them directly from my camera. So you can see how soft that photo is now and how dark the background looks. And that's because I added this grid to it. And like I said, the grid, what it's doing is it's, it's narrowing down the light. So it's basically, it's making a spotlight just on him and then not spilling behind, not in front. Uh, it's just focused on where he is. So that's why they're important. That's a honeycomb grid. All the links are down in the description, but before we go, I want to show you one more thing. Now I have another light set up in the back, which is a rim light. A rim light, basically what it's going to do is it's going to be fired from behind facing the shoulder, back of the head. And what it does is it creates separation. It's going to give a light on this side uh, or whatever side is opposite your main light. And what that's going to do is it's going to create even more separation from the background. Now I also have a color temperature orange gel on it. So it'll give it a, an orange look. This, this lighting setup right here, this Manny Ortiz softbox, the grid on the FJ400, and then the FJ200 with a color gel is how I get 99% of the bangers that I post. It's a two light setup. Sometimes I only run with one light setup and get some good ones. But if I have time to add the, the rim light, this is how I create my lighting. You're seeing it right here. This is the Josh Russell look. It is a uh, 400 watt uh, Westcott light with the beauty dish and the grid, and then a gridded 200 watt with a gel on it. So this is a smaller one. Like I said, it is a 200 watt and it's already set up, ready to go. I just need to turn it on because it's probably sleeping. There we go. I want the real smile in this one now. 
Bam. Look at that. Let's get, let's hit it one more. Let me just turn that back, that light down just a little bit in, in the back because you don't want it to be really powerful. You just want it to, to do what it's supposed to do. Bam, right there. Look at that. That's a banger right there. Now I'd take it in. I would kind of clean up some of the, some of the, the harshness on the skin from that light being that close. Uh, and I would clean it up, get the eye detail out a little bit, make sure everything looks smooth. And now you're seeing the final product product on your screen right now. This is a banger headshot right here. This ideally I would not do a two light setup in a studio setting because you do want more lighting on the bottom side and to fill in under the hat and stuff like that. I'm a hat wearer too. So I've learned to, to, to compensate people wearing hats. I've just wanted to show the one light slash two light setup and how important a grid is. Grids can be kind of expensive. They're an add on that you don't think that you'd want to spend that much money for. But I promise you, if you do, your photos will just, they'll be night and day different because you can control that light so much more. Thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And uh, check out some of the other ones. And I am here to help you. So if you need anything, let me know. And if you haven't yet, check out the Photog Nation, photognation.org. It is my online photography society where I am there firsthand to help you become a better photographer and grow into the best photography business that you can be. I'll talk to you guys later.